From the shadows, a new ally emerges. An unstoppable force? Maybe. A familiar face? Sort of. Who is this mysterious new microphone? <laughs> You're a fool! I'm going to crush you and throw you into the wind! Find out this time on Stream Professor Review Z. Well, here it is, at long last, the Beacon Mic. Is it the USB SM7B that streamers have been dreaming of for the past few years, or is it just another hashtag streamer mic? I'd say it starts out somewhere in the middle, but the inner workings and software capabilities push it towards dream microphone territory. This mic is actually one of three products that Beacon released today. The other two are audio controllers. My review of the Beacon Mix and Mix Create is already up on my channel, linked below. Finish this video first, though. Physically, this mic is as simple as it gets. It's a cylinder, similar to the SM7B, Q9U, and MV7 microphone bodies without the tapered size. It's just the same girth throughout. Bruh. The Beacon logo is etched on the front, barely visible like one of those HDR screen calibration on the consoles. The pop filter and interference cage unscrew together to reveal the capsule, which is a fairly solid size similar to that in other more expensive dynamic microphones. Below that is a LED ring. This seems like typical gamer rainbow unicorn vomit, but was carefully iterated on to be subtle, not shine on the user, and mostly just seem like a colored accent or status indicator, though you can set it to RGB spectrum mode if you desire, or turn it off. The LEDs also run at a high refresh rate, so they don't flicker on camera. The yoke feels at least like metal, and it's fine, and it comes with a cable management clip, which is awesome. But the tightening knob to attach it to your mic stand feels terrible. I don't know what's wrong with it, but compared to the same knob on the SM7B or the Q9U, it is very bad. The back of the mic features only two things, a USB Type-C port and a 3.5mm headphone jack. This can also act as a line-out, more on this later. All of the audio in this video was recorded with the mic, processed with the secret sauce in their software, which I'll show you how to do in a bit. It sounds pretty good, but for $279, it has to compete with some of the best of the best. For that price, you can typically secure used units of the RE320, maybe an RE20 or SM7B if you find the right seller, and definitely mics like the Rode Procaster. Though, all of those still require additional audio equipment to power. Specs-wise, this mic is awesome. It's a dynamic microphone. I have a short talking about the differences linked here, but basically, dynamics are better at rejecting room sound and background sound, but condensers sound more natural and clear. Beacon's going for the typical broadcast sound here but they do it well. The mic rocks a 28.65 millimeter capsule with a cardioid pickup pattern. It has a frequency response of 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz with a sensitivity of minus 27 dBFS at minimum gain. It has an adjustable gain of 0 to 20 decibels. Wait a minute, only 20 decibels of gain? With all the talk about audio interfaces needing high, clean gain, upwards of 60 dB for the SM7B and RE20, what is going on here? Let's talk about that. First and foremost, USB mics work a little different in that regard since the audio interface part is built into the electronics of the mic. It's providing all of the bass gain that the mic needs just to work in the first place already. But also, this mic captures and does all of its processing in 32-bit float, and that is where the real magic begins. 32-bit float is amazing. It's basically like recording raw audio. You know how some photographers or videographers will post the before and after shots of their color grading and then they shoot in these flat, like almost black and white looking images to make sure that they preserve all the highlights and all the shadows that are captured. That's effectively what 32-bit float audio is. It's the, the, the microphone has specifically 94 decibels of dynamic range, meaning you can whisper super quiet or fire a gunshot and still probably not clip the microphone. In a more realistic scenario, that means when all things are working properly, you can do ASMR and shout explicatives at your teammates in a video game with the same setup and not clip or distort. It keeps your viewers' ears happy. Now, Elgato offers a similarly targeted function for this called ClipGuard. ClipGuard runs a safety track, a secondary audio track running at 
minus 20 decibels lower than the main and switches to it when you clip or peek your microphone to help avoid distortion. It will be fine for most people, but technically 32-bit float is the more perfect solution to this problem. However, uh, both are just fine and most streamers will be well served by both. It's worth noting that most applications like OBS cannot use 32-bit float audio, but that's okay because even then, Beacon's mic processing suite is taking that in and you know in raw audio basically and applying their noise removal compression etc before it hits obs and making sure that your audio is clean and ready to go regardless speaking of software let's explore it a bit here all right i'm going to give you a super quick rundown of the software but i'm really trying to keep these videos from being too long so i'm actually going to have a third video up i will go ahead and link it in the description below if it's not live yet walking you through the full software for both for all the devices there will be a full tutorial linked below so for the microphone specifically you have profiles on the left hand side that you can save and recall at different points which is pretty cool you've got settings about the application You've got the mic chain over here, which is the EQ processing suite, including headphone EQ, which is pretty cool. You got gain, you got guides on everything to show you exactly where everything should be. This is a huge educational tool that I am incredibly grateful they added to this because it helps teach everyone how to get the best audio without needing to watch super long nerdy videos. So you got mic setup, noise suppression, which they have this adaptive noise suppression tech, which is really freaking cool. You've got an expander which works kind of like a noise gate, but just kind of compresses the background sounds down instead of just gating them out entirely. You've got a compressor, pretty straightforward. I love this UI for it. It's something that I basically requested and they made it and it's amazing and I love it. I explained it in the full video. And then headphone output, you have mic monitor and headphone EQ, which is actually really cool. I get asked for that a lot. And then different output modes for the actual headphone output. And they're also adding one specifically for IEMs as well. Up at the top, you have the EQ suite. So I recommend going into advanced EQ and enabling the guide. Then you can see what the different frequencies are for your voice, which makes it super easy to figure out exactly how your voice should sound. And you can use the technique called EQ sweeping, where you just take one and shove it all the way up and see how it affects your voice. And then you can lower it and make proper changes from there. You've got full control over the frequency, the gain and the Q width, which is kind of the width of the curve, as well as a different bunch of different band types. All of these settings and knobs and dials can be adjusted pretty much any way you want. So you can use the arrows, you can double click and type, you can scroll wheel it. I love that, super handy. You've got a de-esser, absolutely necessary to reduce those harsh S and T and sounds. You've got a bass enhancer, which works kind of like upping the lower end frequency to get some more, but it kind of expands it a little bit more naturally. I explain it more in the full video. It's really neat. Uh, I don't see the use for one because that's mostly frequencies this mic doesn't even pick up, but three and four are my favorites. And then you have an exciter, which takes those DS sections and adds a bit more natural, but not super harsh or abrasive sound back into it. Love it. Then you have lighting. You got five different lighting modes. You can turn it off and you have control over what happens when you mute it or whenever USB turns off. Love it. And then you have the full mixing suite. The microphone comes with the full Mix Create mixing suite. It is just like the GoXLR, basically. You have a bunch of virtual audio devices, and then you can add your own hardware devices as well, which is really cool. And then you can map specific programs to it using this icon that you can barely see in the top right-hand corner using the Windows volume meter. I will say in, uh, in Windows 11, this is a lot easier to manage than in Windows 10, if it actually opens the right one. There we go. And then you can just assign specific programs to specific output devices. And assuming that it actually is producing sound, then it will show up here in this list. But you can see here, Discord is showing up as NVIDIA container right now for some reason. You have two main submixes, your personal mix and your audience mix, which goes out to your stream. You can control the master level for each, and you can control the individual device level for each or link them together as so. And you can mute either to all devices, just to your audience, just to yourself, or just to voice chat, because there are two different uh, voice options here. You can, like say in Discord, for example, you can hook the microphone itself, just full run through everything, or a separate voice chat mic device, just like the GoXLR had, so that you can run different output devices to that device as well with this routing table. So for example, if you set up one thing to do a sound sample pad or whatever, you have that control as well. One final note, do not run the mic relay to your personal mix. It is super delayed. It will mess up your talking. Instead, use the mic monitor option in the headphones tab. That's the quick rundown on the software. Again, we'll link to full breakdown of it in the description.
Now that I've shown you how it works, let's do some quick audio comparisons, both raw and with the processing I would use between the Beacon mic and some of its competition. Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die. Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die. Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die. Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die. Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die. Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die. Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. One for the Dark Lord on his dark throne in the land of Mordor where the shadows lie. Just as a really goofy test here, we're doing the proximity effect. We're getting right up on the microphone. You can test the plosives. P -p plosives. Three rings for the Oven Kings under the sky, seven for the Dwarf Lords in their halls of stone, nine for the mortal men doomed to die. If we're looking at just the raw, unprocessed, out-of-box sound, the Beacon mic sounds a little more compressed and crunchy than I'd prefer. However, it beats out those characteristics in mics like the Shure MV7, which fare far worse in that regard, but it's not as smooth sounding as the higher end dynamic mics like the RE20 and SM7B, and just a little worse than the cheaper Procaster from Rode. The Elgato Wave comes out on top in terms of clarity, but does not get you towards that broadcast sound that the Beacon mic aims for. Once we apply post-processing, the sound is pretty good. Their post-processing suite is amazing, and you can get some smooth radio vibes going. However, that initially captured compressed sound cannot be magically removed and is still present. Again, it beats the snot out of the MV7, and the Elgato Wave shows its weakness when you want that low-end warmth rather than top-end clarity. But compared to the Earthworks Icon USB, I feel like there's no competition. The Icon USB blows it out of the water. It doesn't come with any of the fancy software of the Beacon Mic, but it's great. Granted, it's $75 more than the Beacon Mic, so you gotta consider that option. <laughs> and of course, the big boy XLR mics blow it out of the water, if you know what you're doing. I've been learning EQ for over a decade now, and I still suck at it, but I'm getting there. On your own, it's very easy to get lost or just configure things wrong, and the educational and hand-holdy aspects of Beacon software will take you a long way towards making sure you sound great. There's value there, but the value is not measured by pure audio quality alone. I think most streamers will be more than happy with this mic's sound basically forever, but if you're chasing a particular sound signature, you may just want to save up. In context though, I'm recording these three and $400 microphones into a $200 plus audio interface and a $600 plus audio recorder, so yeah. The 3.5 millimeter headphone jack on this mic is pretty impressive. Beacon chose to put the same headphone amp used by the AudioQuest Dragonfly Red and Black amps in here, meaning that you can power some crazy good headphones. The headphone output can be set to line level to output to powered speakers or another mixer or device, which as you know from my past reviews is a must have feature for me, or it can be set to normal or high impedance headphone mode to give you the exact audio experience that you need, which is pretty cool. I tested the headphone output with my Sennheiser HD6XX, Monolith M1060, and Odyssey LCD2 headphones. 
and did not notice any issues with the quality or the levels in either of them. It sounded great. Also, the giant 3.5 millimeter extension cable that's included in the box makes it easy to properly route everything without having your headphone cable dangling across your microphone or whatever. It's great. There's also a headphone EQ configurator and toggleable mic monitor. This is a lovely surprise. You get a three band EQ for your headphone mix, as well as a subwoofer slider, which has a more natural bass enhancement. It's great for getting the exact sounding the way that you want, but not something you can adjust on the mix nor the mix create like directly on them. I wanted to test another claim made by Beacon. Supposedly the Beacon mic saves all of its settings onto the mic itself with all of the DSP processing and everything and persists when you plug it into another machine. I have four tests to see how this goes. Does it work on another PC and sound the same? Yes and no. Yes, the settings and your profile do save to the microphone itself, able to be recalled on another PC without setting it up from scratch. However, moving it between Windows PCs means it's not recognized as a microphone or output device on the second PC at all until the Beacon app is installed, which also installs the drivers. This is uh -huh, honestly pretty absurd for a mic to not be plug and play. Does it work on Mac after you configure it on Windows? The mic actually shows up as both a microphone and headphone output device on my M1 Mac Mini, and I can capture it, but it sounds not quite right. <laughs> this is a microphone test using the Beacon microphone on my M1 Mac Mini. Test, test, one, two, three. Yeesh. Does it work on Linux after you configure it on Windows? Surprisingly, Linux kind of fared the best here. Unfortunately, at least in a live boot, the headphone output is not detected, but the microphone is, and it sounds just like it does on the PC it was set up on. This is a microphone test of the Beacon microphone hooked up to Kubuntu Linux. There is hope yet. Lastly, what about game consoles? Sadly, neither Xbox nor PlayStation consoles even acknowledge the mic being plugged in, and you can't use it. Lame. I also wanted to talk about some issues I've had stability-wise. I cover this more in the Mix and Mix Create review, but I've had some rocky issues with the software. And then, uh, you may have already seen me discuss this on Discord or Twitter, but I honestly have not had enough time to really test and utilize these devices yet on a super thorough level. While beta testers have had their units for six months or so, I've had mine for two weeks, and the software to actually run them for less than a week at the time this video gets published. The software is not finished, it's not ready. My personal biggest nightmare has seemed to be a conflict with either my AMD Threadripper system specifically, or a the USB audio devices that my Soundcraft so I'm gonna be kind of optimistic and say that I fixed my AMD issues and that it was in fact the AMD USB chipsets that were to blame because I installed a Sonnet Allegro super high-end USB PCIe card in my system and I've been running the mix and the create or the mix create and the mic on and off, playing audio through my speakers and everything, and it seems to be working fine now. Haven't given it enough time to be certain, but if I include this in the video, I guess that was the fix. Frustrating. Hopefully they can work out their issues with AMD, but I'm glad I got it resolved at least. The team has also been battling issues with Windows changing or reporting different volume settings when accessing the mic, causing it to generate new profiles or mute the mic upon first time accessing it or not reflect the mute status at all, which has been quite annoying to deal with. $279 is a lot of money for a microphone. I know I like to talk about expensive microphones sometimes, and I have an absurdly expensive mic review coming soon, so get subscribed. But for most streamers, it's a big investment, more so if you want to pair with the mix or mix create. $279 gets you fairly close to a used SM7B or RE20 on a good day, it's hard for me to sit here and tell anyone they should spend this much on a mic, especially if you already have a good microphone. That being said, any higher end XLR mic still requires a separate interface purchase, while the Beacon mic is USB and doesn't. You get a full, incredible post-processing suite and a high tier headphone amp along with it. As a complete package, it's a one-stop shop, taking up far less desk space than any mixer or interface. If your goal is simple, high quality audio and control, and you're buying audio gear soon, I think the Beacon mic makes more sense as a purchase than most, you know, microphone options. But I also think that the Elgato Wave Mic or the Go XLR Mini with a Q2U is also a great starter kit. The Beacon Mic sounds all right, has an incredible app suite, awesome plosive rejection, and solves many problems at once. Your choice is yours. Your other choice is whether you want to learn to get the best possible audio quality by watching this guide here. Remember, be kind, rewind, what the? Elbow. Elbow. What am I even saying? Wait a minute. I'm talking. I'm still stuck in here. I'll get 
you for this! You won't escape! 